Welcome into the Raymond Monica Show. This is episode nine, and our first guest on the show is Coach Mark Speckman. He's the offensive coordinator at Clarion University. And let's get started with how you got here. So before this, you were at UC Davis, pretty prestigious school, prestigious job. What made you want to come to Clarion University and coach football here? Well, you know, I'd been there five years, and, and I felt like I'd gone pretty much as far as I was going to go. I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the kids, enjoyed the coaches, and... Um, so that was part of it. The other part was family related. You know, my, my youngest daughters, my two daughters live in Manhattan and my son lives in Germany. So we are way far away from them. And uh, we found out in July, my youngest is, is expecting her first child. So my wife was quite excited about getting closer to the East Coast. And then two days later, after I found that out, Coach Monica uh, and, I, and I Zoomed about this job. And then two days later, I drove a car out from New York here and saw the campus, was impressed. and offered the job and took it so it's kind of family and, and a little bit professional but mostly you know just to be closer yeah so you kind of got started late here because our, our old offensive coordinator Peter Collins took an offensive analyst job at Pitt University so when you came in here you only had one week to implement right. your offense before right. the season started right. how do how do you do that well that was really difficult and you know so every since you know I, I went back to California and uh, knew I was moving I mean I was just trying to get everything together and get all my film and get but everything's really in the box right now, and, and, and so it it's really was starting from scratch, and um, I kind of treated it a little bit like a high school all-star game, you know, that you can't put in everything right away, and, um, but I want to put a system in that we can build on, and, and so, I, you know, it, it, was, it was very difficult. Our coaching staff stepped up, and, 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 and Coach Monica gave us the time we needed as much as he could, and there really wasn't much time, but... Uh, you know, somehow we got, you know, we got it done. We're all lined up in the right places for the most part. Yeah, so you created your own system, mm -hmm. talking about the system that you implemented, called the Fly Sweep System, and it's used all around the country, even in the NFL. Right. What, how did you come up with that system? Well, I didn't invent the Fly Sweep, but I'll take credit for making it an offense. <laughs> and um, when I learned it, it was four plays out of one formation, and it was a little school in the Central Valley, uh, Delano High School. That coach was Gene Beck. And he taught it to some friends of mine that I coached with when I was in my 20s. And I always thought it was just, at first I thought it was ludicrous because you're running sideways. And then I realized, you know, the benefits of it. And then, you know, we were usually outsized or outmatched. Or, and so you had to come with some creative ways to move the ball. And, so, and then a lot of times kids would make mistakes and I'd stop the film and go, hey, that's pretty good. And we put it in. So it was just, it's been a, a, just kind of a labor of love over a lot of years. Right, so when you got here, you know, we have a lot of, a lot of young players, a mm -hmm. lot of raw talent out there. They have seemed to be able to buy into your system mm -hmm. and, and get a lot of good things on the field. How, how did you get them to buy in? Well, I, I hope they buy in, you know. I mean, one of the things about this, about my system is we're going to take, we have a lot of guys touching the football, so you have to be unselfish. And, and, and that's hard to teach kids. And, I'm, and I think our kids have done a great job of understanding that. Obviously, they all want the ball more. Mm -hmm. And... Um, but you got to show them the benefit of explosive plays, and that's really what I, I try to preach is, hey, we can be explosive, and, and we have proven that. We've had a lot of big plays. We've also had a lot of, a lot of bad plays, but uh, the big plays, uh, I think, give the team confidence, and, um, you know, and I think after you, they see the effect of it, they, they buy in. Yeah, so on top of being a football coach, you're also an author. Yeah. You wrote your own book called How to Live in a Digital World Without Digits. Right. What's that book about? Well, you know, I, I've done quite a bit of speaking, uh, you know, to corporations or whatever um, over the years because I was born without hands. And so obviously, you know, people are curious about that. And um, when I go to these speaking deals, everybody would say, well, can I, you know, do you have a book? And I didn't have a book. And um, it's a, finally, uh, one of my ex-players helped me with it. And we wrote this book just kind of for that, that reason. And, you know, it's out there somewhere on Amazon or something. But... Um, <laughs> I haven't, uh, I haven't done a great job of being an entrepreneur and getting that thing sold, but uh, it was fun. It was a fun project, and basically it's just about my, my life and how, um, you know, you live in a world where you have to figure out how to do things, because nobody's telling me anything. I mean, I was, basically you're on your own, and a lot of us in, in certain situations in our life feel that way, I bet, you know, and so that really was what the book was about, was, you know, kind of how I did it and just... Not that I'm better than anybody, but just, you know, there's, there's ways to overcome things. Awesome, Coach Beckman. Thank you for your time. On to head coach Raymond Monica.
Coach Monica, welcome in. This is episode nine of the Raymond Monica Show. So let's get started with the game from last week. We talked about the tailgate last week and how it got 38,700 votes. And the tailgate was amazing. It brought out a lot of fans. It created a great environment at the game. Can you talk about the environment that you felt at home last week? Well, the thing about it, any time we get a chance to play at home, it's great for our fans to come out. I think that was great to have the tailgate party at our place and shows you the interest in Clarion football right now. So, uh, you know, I thought the guys played extremely hard over the weekend. Uh, wasn't a result we wanted, but we'll go back to the drawing board and get ready for this week. Right, so it was a tough loss at home. And after a game like that where you're coming off an emotional high after back-to-back -back wins and you take a tough loss at home, how do you get the team ready and focused on next week and ready to play this next game? Well, each and every week the thing we do, we come in and we meet on, on Monday. We talk about what we did good, bad. And we watch the film. If we won or we lost, and then we put that game aside and we get ready for the next opponent. And uh, just trying to be consistent each and every week of uh, what we do and how we plan. Um, you know, that's what we're doing all year long, no matter if we win or lose. Yeah, so your quarterback, Zach Benedict, he had a couple of tough runs, including a 15 yard touchdown run. What type of leadership qualities does he bring to your team? Uh, Zach's been, been doing a real good job. I mean, he leads off the field in the weight room, everything he does. Uh, he runs the ball a lot better than we, I think teams give him credit. Uh, he's picked up a lot of yards uh, when we needed him. And uh, like you said, uh, I mean, the run he made and scoring and running the goal guy over in the end zone uh, sh shows his capability of, of running the ball inside. Right, so you guys have been banged up all season. You've had a lot of injuries. You've had a, a lot of guys you didn't think were going to play. They've now stepped up and started. You've even had some guys move positions. Now they're starting at that position. Can you talk about the resiliency of this team and how they come to work and play every single week? Well, you know, every, every team's going to have some injuries. So the thing you try to do is put your best players at the positions, get your best 11 on the football field. You know, but that, that's every year. But some of the guys that play multiple positions, uh, they've worked extremely hard. And, you know, next guy's got to step up. When somebody goes down, next guy's got to come in. And a lot of times you wind up finding a player that you go, hey, he's developed pretty quick uh, and really helping the football team. And sometimes the, the guy that was starting comes back they can't take the starting job over. Uh, so I've been really pleased the way the guys have worked hard and moving a couple of positions and the way they work. All right, so these next two weeks you've got kind of the gauntlet of the PSAC. What is your sling and stone type of mentality to be able to get you to get an opportunity to get to these wins next week? Well, the only thing I'm worried about is today, getting the guys ready to practice today. Uh, we're going to work on thirds now on Wednesday, and we're just going to keep doing what we've been doing each and every, every week and each and every day. Uh, we were concerned about Slippy Rock uh, this weekend, and we want to be the best that we can be. Awesome, Coach. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Joining us now on the show is coaching legend and former Clarion University head coach, Coach Al Jacks. So, Coach, you coached at Clarion Univers University for 19 seasons. Your first season, you went 4-4, four and four, and then after that, you had 18 straight winning seasons. What was it like building a winning culture, and then after building it, also being able to sustain it throughout all those years? Well, I, I, I don't even have a real answer for that, but what you got to get involved with is the quality of the young men that you're recruiting Sometimes you had to pass up a little bit on talent, figuring what kind of character does this kid have and what have you, and will he be a team type player and develop into what I would say is uh, adopted part of the program. I mean, I, it's a hard answer. I, I don't even know, you, but you have to have adequate talent. And, uh, but I'd, I'd say that was the basis of it. I mean, the real secret came for us was in 1966 when we recruited a couple of kids. One was uh, Jim Elkhorn, really probably the best player to ever come here. We went undefeated in 66. And after that, we were more welcome every place we went in recruiting. And you just can't sit by and hope that kids will come on their own. So you have to get out, visit schools. But that really kind of is the season that got us started. Okay. Right, so in your time here, you also won six PSAC division titles and three conference championships and were multiple-time PSAC West Coach of the Year. How, once you receive those honors, how do you like, not stay complacent and continue to go on and push harder and keep winning? <laughs> I don't know. I know winning is uh, a lot of fun, but losing is so bad that uh, it's worth it. And we had a very good coaching staff, too, and they were uh, all kind of coaches that you'd want, you know, professionals, ethics, the whole, the whole thing. 
and our kids just bought into it. And I can't say much more about that, but we didn't fool around either. We had a lot of strict discipline, and I don't mean physical discipline. If you weren't measuring up to what was expected, not from us, but from your fellow players, I'd say the biggest key was the players put the discipline on each other. This is what they wanted. So I, I think that was really the basis of uh, why we continued you know, to win. I mean, at least be competitive. I'd say it's a better word. Yeah, so one thing I found in my research when we were doing a little, a little bit of research on you was that you had a nickname, Jumbo Jacks. How, how'd you get that nickname, Coach? Well, I'll tell you, uh, it came, I went out to, I, w I grew up in the city and we didn't have junior high or anything like that. You went right to the high school. So when I went in there in the ninth grade and I was trying out for the football team, Coach said, why don't you go over and start working with the quarterbacks? Well, when I went over there, it turned out I was the biggest kid already. There was two seniors ahead of me, but I was bigger than they were. And one, one day said, man, you're a jumbo. And that's been with me all my life, if you can believe that. Yeah, just a simple statement like that. That's how it happened, though. Yes, that's amazing. So going back to your playing career, uh, once you graduated high school, you went on to play quarterback for Penn State, and then you had a, a short stint in the CFL, and then you came back to, play, to Penn State. What was your time like when you were playing football? What was my time like? Yeah, uh, like, uh, like how was your experience playing football, and did that, and did that get you ready for uh, your career as a coach? I'd say it was, but when I was really in school as an undergrad, I wasn't thinking of a career in coaching. It was like circumstances. Everything kept fall, falling into a pattern, a pattern. And, uh, but playing college football with the type of coaches we had and the quality of them and the team morale was so good that it left a very good uh, – feeling it feeling it for me so when I graduated I wanted to jump into that I, I didn't I had to go into service so when I came out it was uh, the end of May and I didn't have a job or anything and a guy approached me about going to Canada well I said I don't have anything else to do so I went up but anyhow by the end of the summer I got released and by circumstances Joe Paterno called me and said I heard you got released what are you doing I said nothing would you like to coach a freshman football team? We'll get you in grad school. We'll get uh, your wife a job teaching. And that's how it all ha played out. That's, that, that's amazing. So uh, during your tenure as the Clarion head coach here, you actually had a short five-day stint as the head coach of Williams College, and then you decided to come back to Clarion. What went into that decision? Well, I tell you, I was at a perfect age. I was like uh, 35, 36, going on 37. And I knew if I didn't try to move at this time, a number of jobs were always coming around. They were this, that, assistant coaches. But anyhow, Williams approached me. I didn't even, and I, I, I said, okay, I'm going. But I went up there, and after five days, had a big meeting with the squad. And uh, we talked. But the best-looking kid was sitting in the front row, stretched out like he was almost going to sleep. His ankles were crossed. And... Uh, this is what I expect of you. He comes up to me after the meeting. He says, well, I'll tell you what, Coach. I'm not going to make it to the first couple of weeks of practice. I said, oh, wh why is that? He said, my family always sails in the Mediterranean Sea during the summer. And I just won't be back. I thought, I don't think I could get along with this kind of atmosphere. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's Division Three Ivy League. Um, so I, th I kept thinking, what do I want out of life? I asked if I could come back to Clarion, and they said, yes. So I come bouncing back. <laughs> Amazing. So Sports Illustrated wrote that you faced your biggest rebuilding task in 1980, and you went on to like have a great winning record that season and even compete in the conference championship. Was that a magical season for you? I, don't know, I might have to say it was because the best team I thought we ever did have was in 1979. Now, that's a long time ago. But that, that was a powerful team. We got upset. I won't bore you with that. We ended up going 10-1 and one or 9-1 and one in 79. And almost everybody graduated. But our starting quarterback came back and a few other kids. And they just, it just jived. There's something about not always having the best talent that you win. It's morale, attitude, we can do. And it just must have fallen into place. That's all. Yeah. Awesome. So last question for you here. A new coaching staff has come into Clarion University football, led by Coach Monica, and he, he's built a fantastic staff, and they've gotten a couple wins under their belt this year. What do you see in this new coaching staff that Clarion University has? 
Well, I see great experience and uh, backgrounds for all of them. I mean, I know them all, and I know a couple of the new guys. I only know them by their reputation, but th they are off to a great start. I mean, I, they really are. I mean, we're I mean, we're not like we're going to win a whole lot of games, but when you only have like 45, 50 players, and you have injuries, and you're building. I mean, he inherited Coach Monica inherited a very weak football team. In other words, there's very few seniors, juniors. It's a very young team. But their attitude and their morale, I've been to every game, and they're on the right track. I really believe that. They, gotta, they need one year of good recruiting, and it'll be this year. They didn't even get to recruit last year. They were hired so late. that. Uh, but look for the future. I finally, after all these years, expect that you know, we should rebound. At least have a program that's disciplined, quality. People are proud of you know, their squad. That's how I look at it, though. Thank you so much for your time, Coach. And that concludes Episode 9 of The Raymond Monica Show.